Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But before we get started, let's reach into the top hat for the Magic Illusion of the Week. Magic that happens in someone's hands is always the most mystifying and the most fun. So you're going to tell somebody, I've got a styrofoam cup and inside a shiny coin. And what I want to do is drop that coin directly through the slot in the top of this cup. But wait a minute, there is no slot. So what am I going to do? Fortunately, I have a portable slot that I always carry with me. So I'm going to drop this coin straight through the portable slot and there it goes, coin, and push it down into the slot like this, it falls through the bottom of the cup. Hand. Very simple trick, let me show you how to do it. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. Okay, I think that's enough Pulp Fiction for a little while. I'm going to change the format just a little bit this morning. It's actually 6 o'clock Las Vegas time, and if you're on the East Coast, it's 3 o'clock in the morning for you. But what I want to do is loosen things up a little bit. You'll notice I have a very basic blue background behind me, and I'm just wearing a black shirt primarily because today is a memorial to Danny Gans, very popular entertainer in Las Vegas and a bunch of his friends are getting together to give tribute to Danny, and I'm going to go to that. So I just decided, no tie today, let's just be casual and enjoy what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to talk today about a couple of questions and answer a few things that I've gotten uh, through email, and I invite everybody here to send me an email anytime you have a question, and I'll be glad to answer them. And we'll look through a couple of things in the uh, Journal of Endodontics. Uh, first thing is, I was noticing an article, and they have come up with a new way of imaging and finding out what the root canals look like. This is a new technique for investigating canal morphology. Teeth were immersed into ink without preparation, no access cavity, and then they were placed into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for two hours to let the ink penetrate into the root canal through the apical foramen, apical deltas, and foramen or lateral canals under stable positive pressure. I think it's fascinating that they could get such strong and intimate detail just by getting uh, the dye up inside the apex of the teeth without even making an access opening. It's fascinating. So what I'd like to do is read some of the results that they had, and at the same time I'll show you some photographs that we had from that article in a close-up. The results indicated that all the teeth were well stained and fine details were well revealed. Apical deltas were seen in, and lateral canals anywhere from 12 to 83 or 68 percent depending on the tooth. Most of the central incisors, 95.8 percent, and of the lateral incisors, 91.4 percent, and canines, 75.4 percent, displayed type 1 canal configurations. Whereas most of the first premolars, 87.3 percent, and second premolars, 72.3 percent, possessed two canals with type 2, 4, or 6 canal configuration. Now, the majority of distal buccal roots and palatal roots on first molars, 88.9% and 97.8%, second molars, 92% and 94%, and third molars, 87.5% and 91.6%, had type 1 canal configuration. Now, the prevalence of mesial buccal roots with type 1 configuration was 66.7% in maxillary first molars and 82% in second molars, 62% in third molars. This modified technique of canal staining can effectively reveal detailed root canal systems. We can now see things that we could not see any other way, and I look forward to more studies done under these same conditions. Now let's answer a question from uh, one of our people that sent us an email on the Internet. This question comes up quite often, so I'd like to take a minute and explain to you how we do a post, a core, and a root canal all at the same time. But before I do that, I would like to hasten to add that most of the time we do not do posts. They are very seldom needed. Most of the time when they're most needed, they don't work. And when they are not needed, such as in molars, they work every time. But let's get right to the question. And if you have a tooth that truly does need a post, what can we do 
to uh, restore that at the same appointment. So I would like to use this little uh, cheat sheet right here that we use in our root camps to help illustrate the different points. Now the first thing we do is complete the root canal therapy and then we'll go on to this list. And as soon as the root canal is completed, we will prepare the post space prior to sealing the canal. Then number two, we'll seal and fill with our standard gutta percha filling technique. And we're going to remove the gutta percha that actually is up in the canal space or actually in the post space. Uh, and we'll do that by taking a post drill and heating it up, going back into the same post space and just melting out the gutta percha. Then we redefine the post space, bond the post into place, and place the core build up at that same appointment. And the best way I've found to get the gutta percha out of the post preparation space is to take the touch and heat, slide down next to the gutta percha, then activate the heat source and slide laterally, which cuts off the gutta percha at the floor of the post space. Take that out, etch the canal, bond the post in place, and do the core buildup. Again, don't get crazy with posts because most of the time we don't need them. Well, that's it for another root tip of the week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers inviting you to register at endorootcamp.com for free videos and special reports you can't get anywhere else. Meanwhile, I will see you at our next Indo Root Camp.